Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do my hyperlapse sequences. By the way, if you haven't seen my latest time lapse hyperlapse video, there is a link at the top right corner of your screen, or you can find it in the description below. So there are two ways you can do a hyperlapse. One is through video, which we will be focusing on here. And the other way is through photos when you're moving and taking pictures at certain intervals. And this is actually my preferred way of doing a hyperlapse because there is much more time that passes through. So you get more of that hypersense to your videos. But I will do a separate video for that because it is different from this tutorial. So the camera we will be using is the Osmo Pocket. But if you have the Pocket 2 or the Osmo Mobile, this applies to that as well because we will be connecting our phone and using the DJI Mimo app. There is a hyperlapse function, but I don't think it's as good and you're limited to 1080p. What we will be using is the object tracking. And in this way, we can record 4K and up to 30 frames per second. So let's get started. I will do the hyperlapse in one of the most famous streets in Budapest, Zrinyi Utsa. And what I'll do is I'll walk forward. First, I'll connect the Osmo Pocket to my phone and get the Mimo app started. Once you've got it all connected, this is what you'll see on your screen. Okay, make sure you're in video mode and check if your resolution is set to 4K and you can choose 30 frames per second or 24 frames. It's really up to you. Okay, now the next thing you need to do is choose which object you wanna track. And for me, it was the Basilica in the background. And to enable object tracking, all you need to do is draw a square or a rectangle at the object you want to track. You might have to do this a couple times because you know it might be too small. So all you have to do is just draw a bigger square. And the square will turn green once it's enabled. Now all you have to do is walk forward. Even though this is a three axis camera or three axis gimbal. You wanna be as steady as you can when you're moving forward. The best way to do this is to have your camera arm straight but slightly bent. And imagine you're holding a cup of coffee and trying not to spill it. And we'll do this all the way to the end. I think I did a little under two minutes here. So now that I've recorded the video, next step is to import it into After Effects. So let's open up After Effects. Okay, now we just need to import the video. Import file. And it should be this one, 0385. So this is all the information about the video. It's in 4K, shot in 30 frames per second, and it's about two minutes long. And before we can do anything to this, we have to make a new composition. So I will just drag this here to your new comp. There it is, your new composition. If you right click it, you can go to composition settings. And if you want, you can change any of these. So right now it's two minutes long. It's not a hyperlapse video. So the first thing we need to do is to speed up the entire video. And so you need to right click here, go to time, enable time remapping. Once you've clicked that, you'll have these two dots. These are keyframes here. So this is the beginning and this is the end at two minutes. What I'm gonna do is bring it all the way down to about three seconds. And then we'll trim this workflow here. Let's bring this down, That's about it. Right click and trim comp to work area. Cause you don't need anything that's to the right anymore you just need what's here from the one to the th no, three seconds trim it it's okay it's a little bit off trim it again and so we'll see what that looks like now so now it's starting to look like a hyperlapse video but if you notice it's kind of it feel it looks like you're riding a wave because it's kind of wavy so it's not as steady so there are two ways you can stabilize a footage. One is through warp stabilizer and the other one is track motion. 
and they do work differently so we'll do both just to see what the difference is. Now before you can use either one you have to do a pre-comp of your current composition because when you have time remapping it doesn't allow you to do any of the stabilizing. So you go back to your comp here and you do pre-comp and make sure move all attributes is selected. Okay and then it treats it as like a whole new composition. So the first one we'll do is warp stabilizer. You go to effects and presets. See it here. What you want to do is drag it to your footage and it's going to take its time. It's automatically stabilizing it now. Okay, it's finished. So we press spacebar to preview the video. So as you can see, there is some warping. You can see the basilica in the background moving and getting bigger, smaller. And that's because of the stabilizer, because it's trying to warp the image um, and trying to keep it steady. But in this video, it's not really working so well. So right now we'll use the track motion instead. Okay, so to get to track motion, you wanna go to tracker here. Make sure your composition is selected and you want to click track motion but before we do this this is basically the object tracking the option the function that we used in the memo app so basically you're reapplying it and keeping it even more steady okay so now we just click track motion and once you do that you will have this two little boxes but you need to zoom in to actually see it so you have two boxes now you have the small one this is where you choose the object you're tracking and the bigger one is where after effects is going to search for the object you chose so for this video we're going to go all the way up to here i'm going to track this and that should be okay put this back to fit and now you hit the play button here so when track motion is finished, you'll notice that there are these key points or keyframes and you want to zoom in just to make sure there's nothing abnormal. Like for example, if this key point was all the way here, then you're going to get a jerky footage because these points is where the camera is tracking it. So it's smooth here and all of a sudden it'll go all the way to the right. What you want to do is just make sure that these are kind of like in a straight line not not straight line but a smooth flowing going through so i'm just going to adjust a few just to make sure it looks a bit better okay so that looks okay let's uh let's preview it now the next step is to put all these tracking points into a null object so what you do is click here you're going to right click new Null object and make sure on your tracker menu here at the edit target it is the null object press ok and then apply ok again so now all those points is in this null object okay so now the next step is to create a camera so you right click new camera and press ok okay now you have your camera here and what you want to do is parent it or link it to your null object. So this little icon here, you want to left click and hold it down. See this line, you want to connect it to your null object. There. And after that, you want to make these layers into a 3D layer. So this box here, 3D layer, and you just click it for the null object and your composition. Okay, so now let's preview the video with all the changes we've made. So the video is definitely more steady now. There's no warping going on and that's because of track motion. But because of track motion, the camera is constantly moving and you see the video go out of frame. And if you're working with a 1080p composition with a 4K footage, you wouldn't run into this problem but since we're working in 4k so what we need to do now is scale the footage so it doesn't go out of frame anymore so we'll scrub through the timeline and just check the points where it's going out of frame it's quite a few places what we'll do is go to composition here go to transform and scale just gonna scale it up 
so it's in frame you see these this is the actual footage and this is the frame here okay that looks perfect let's double check just in case yes so it's not going out of frame anymore so the final step is to add some motion blur because if you're in a car or you're in a train and you're moving really fast, you'll notice that there is motion blur going on. And so you want to apply that to your footage. So there are plugins you can buy for motion blur, but After Effects has its own built in. I'm sure the, the ones you can buy is much better and works much better for this. But when you're just getting started, I think the built in plugin works perfectly fine. So to get motion blur, you just click on your comp. Go to effects, go to time and force motion blur. Okay, so the default setting is eight, but I usually go 20, maybe 30 sometimes, depending on how fast uh, the footage is moving. But let's just try 20. So now you'll notice on the sides and the foreground here that there is motion blur and that's what you're looking for. So now let's see what everything looks like with all the changes we've made. So the footage looks steady, it's stabilized, and there's some motion blur for some hyper-realism to it. So you've noticed that it's not that difficult, it's just you need some time and you need to apply these to each clip. So track motion is a really great tool. You can track words to move along with your footage. And if you've ever noticed a dance video where the camera is stabilized with the person, that's track motion. You can do so much with it. You know, the limits is your imagination. And actually, don't write off work stabilizing because what I've noticed through a lot of testing, work stabilizer works best when you're panning from side to side and track motion works best when you're moving forwards and backwards. Uh, this is for hyperlapse, you know. It could be different from, for you. It depends on what you're doing. So I hope this was helpful for you, especially if you wanted to do hyperlapse and try new things with it. So be sure to check out my latest hyperlapse video. There is a link in the description below. And I'll put another link as well. If you want to see the very first hyperlapse video I made, there is a Vimeo link there. It used, it used to be on YouTube, but because of copyright issues with the music I use, I had to delete it. So thanks for watching. I will do a tutorial on my preferred way of doing a hyperlapse with photography but there is more editing to do with that as well so thanks again if you like what you see please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you all next time